Ik dood bo het shukria. There's a lot of misinformation in Western media. Your motivation to show me as much as possible. I will be Pakistan's ambassador when I come back. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Hafiz Ramzan and I am coming to you from across the world. And we have a very special guest and his name is Tim Timothy Jones, right? So welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Hafiz. It is my honor to be here. What are you doing here? That's a good question. What am I doing here? Well, it's a long story, but first, let me just tell you that my name is Tim Jones and I am from the United States of America. I live in a, near a city called Seattle. And about 14 years ago, I started humor writing. Right. But three years ago, my lovely wife suggested I create humor videos. And so I did. But I didn't know anything about Is how to do really that. Is she really lovely or you, you're just saying on uh, uh, and, uh, and the camera? I think she figured if I spent more time recording videos, I'd be spending less time with her. Oh. <laughs> so uh, how, how we met together, would you please describe this? Yes. Quite by serendipity. We met because I was looking for someone to help take my recordings of humor videos and edit them add sound effects, images, background, captions. I didn't know how to do any of that. I didn't yeah. want to know. So a friend of mine told me about a website called Fiverr yes. that has freelance marketing technology consultants and, and freelancers all over the world. And so I went to the website and I stumbled upon Hafiz Ramzan and Next Studio. Yes. So I didn't know anything about you, but I reached out, explained yeah over the internet, what I was looking for, and you responded within like an hour. Okay. And that's how it started. So why did you choose me, not <laughs> others? Because everybody else turned me down. No, that's not it at all. <laughs> that's not it at all. Um, you were very responsive. You made it clear that you understood what my needs were. And I, I have to admit, I, I was a little apprehensive because you were 12 hours ahead of me, yes. literally yes. across yes. the world. And I didn't know you. I didn't know your experience. So it was sort of a leap of faith to try to work with you. And I asked you, I said to you, how about we do a couple videos together as an experiment? And if I like what I see, I'll continue to work with you. And that was three years and four months ago. And we've been working together ever since. How long you have been here in Pakistan? I, I'm coming up on exactly one week. Why you decided to visit Pakistan? Uh, well, <laughs> I got on the wrong flight in Istanbul. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's crazy. <laughs> um, I have known you for three years. Right. For the last two years, you and I have talked about someday, maybe, inshallah, inshallah. we could get together to meet. And we explored having you come to visit me. We explored me coming to visit you. And what started out as a business partnership yes. turned into a friendship. That's right. And that friendship turned into a very close friendship. And then <clears throat> you introduced me to your then business partner and also a close friend, yes. Hamad. Hamad. And uh, I became a close friend to Hamad too. And how you became very close to Hamad as well. That's a great question. And the reason for that is after we started working together, you and I yes. doing humor videos, eventually we had the idea together to perhaps create a project where Americans learn a little bit more about the Pakistani people, its culture, its values. And Americans, yes. Americans learn about Pakistan and Pakistan learns about America. And there are so many things going over social media about positive, negative, uh, there are too A lot of misinformation. Yes. And we thought this might be a bridge, a small bridge, a tiny bridge, but a bridge to improving our understanding of each other's cultures. Not only what's different, but also how much we have in common. And while you and I started recording these videos together, eventually you introduced me to Hamad. Yes. And after time, it became Hamad and I doing these videos. Yes. And over time, I started to learn more about Hamad and his background and his history. And we became close friends too. And to answer your question, it came to a point where I felt I just want to see my friends in person. 
so basically you and Ahmad became very close due to uh, due to your project that named across the world that is right is that correct that's, that's exactly right so when you decided to visit Pakistan yeah. so I remember one thing when Michelle posted a, uh, an update on Facebook that uh, you guys are coming to uh, going to Israel Ijab Jordan stuff yes. uh, that countries and also to travel to Pakistan right how was your friend's reaction yours and Michelle's as well well, the reaction to the first part, going to Israel, Jordan, and Egypt as part of a tour, yes. that was just, oh, that's fun. Yes. And then things in Israel got completely out of hand, and so we canceled that. Yes. But I still wanted to go to Pakistan. And my friends' reactions were very interesting. A few of them had the reaction of, oh, isn't that dangerous? Yes. Because of the misinformation in the news. That's true. That's Are you going to be safe? We know the answer to that now, of course. But most of them, the reaction was, why Pakistan? Yeah. Because Americans generally have not visited your beautiful country. They don't know anything about your beautiful country. Um, and I told them, it's some, it's, my reason is a little bit to learn about this culture that I too knew very little about. But it was mostly, I wanted to see my friends. I wanted to see you. I not wanted to see time. Hamad. And Pakistan is part of it, yes. but I also really wanted to connect with you in person because you Me and I have been talking. Hamad. <laughs> Mostly Hamad. Oh, really? A, no, of, both of you, of course, both of you. Because we've been talking about this for two years. Yes. And tell me, uh, what was your uh, wife's reaction when you decided to come to visit Pakistan alone? Yeah. Um, a lot of people might have thought that that's odd, that's strange. But my wife, she just wasn't able to travel. She had yes. too many commitments and I didn't want this to slip. And her reaction has been nothing but positive. She thinks it's wonderful that I'm going to this very different culture yes. and experiencing something that to use her words is pushing me outside my comfort zone. And that is true. I'm not as adventurous as my wife. So this is different for me. And she is very supportive of it and very happy. That's wonderful. So we can say she's really lovely. Yes, she's a, okay. I'm, I'm a very lucky person to have my wife. You have been here for a week, yes, right? One week. And how horrible ex uh, your experience is? <laughs> terrible. No, terribly wonderful. Uh, <laughs> it has been a life experience for me. I have, even though I've only been to two cities, Lahore and Islamabad, I've learned so much about your history, your culture. I've met some of your friends. I've met family members of you in Hamad. I have been surprised and overwhelmed so, by how kind everybody is. I know if we are meeting on a Zoom uh, occasionally, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're meeting with Hamad and me sometime as yeah. well. And uh, so w what do you feel the difference uh, meeting on a Zoom and meeting in person? You know, you can only understand a person so well over a video call. You can't hug them. Yes. You can't shake their hands. You can't um, see the, the nuances of their body language yes. that you see in person. Yes. Yes. And I think one of the greatest thrills of my life that could never have happened yes. over a Zoom call or a WhatsApp video call <laughs> was when I came out of the arrivals gate at the airport in Lahore at five in the morning. Yes, what were you thinking uh, when you were entering into the Pakistan, uh, when you land in Pakistan and uh, coming out of airport, right? And what are your thoughts? And I was excited because I was going to see my friends. I was a little nervous because what am I doing in Pakistan? It's so <laughs> different from my world. But I was particularly a little anxious when the doors opened and I saw what to me looked like 2,000 people all waiting for people to arrive. And I'm thinking, how will I ever find my friends? I'm going to be kidnapped. <laughs> yes, and I could take a nap. I'm, I was pretty tired, 22 hours of flying. Right. But then I saw you and I saw Hamad and I know you saw me first. Yes. And that was one of the most exciting moments of my life. What was your reaction? Then <laughs> As I described it to some school children today, my reaction was, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> I tend to overreact, <laughs> but that's who I am.
<laughs> so you spent, uh, I believe, three days in Lahore. In Lahore, the first three, and then three in Islamabad, and yes. finishing up in Lahore. So, uh, particularly, if we talk about the first three days in Lahore. Can you summarize your day? Uh, yes. Th- those three days. Yes, it was a combination of seeing some historic, important cultural sites like the Badshahi Mosque and the and the Lahore Fort and things like that, m- mixed with meeting family, meeting your dear friend. Usman, hello Usman, nice. and um, going to um, the Wagar um, border yes. ceremony with your friend Iqbal, yes, and meeting your friend Hamad's family, yes, and everything was wonderful. But it was the connection with you, your friends, the family members I met. I um, think you are forgetting about my sons, right? How you can forget? How dare you? Uh, it's been a week. I'm tired. I had the chance to meet your family. I yeah. think on the I think our very first full night we well, I had dinner yes. in your home. And it is my understanding that being invited into someone's home and to meet their lovely children yes. and to be introduced to their spouse is an unusual honor reserved for family. And um, you made me feel like family that evening yes. and I will always r- remember how honored I felt. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, I believe we left Lahore at second um, of December, right? I think that's right. I think that's right. And uh, how was your travel from Lahore to Islamabad? It was thrilling. <laughs> I've never experienced the kind of traffic that we experienced in Lahore, yes. the between the the motorcycles and the scooters and the cars and the trucks and everybody weaving in and out of traffic. Overcrowded, right? It was chaos, yes. but everybody. He's quite used to it. Yes. <laughs> I was not, but it was exciting to me to watch. Uh, we had a, about a four and a half hour moment uh, drive to Islamabad and we stayed at a very fancy hotel and it was just great. It was great. And I think you were invited in Connected Pakistan conference. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> okay, you have to remember I'm a humor writer. Yes. <laughs> so there was a conference of technology freelancers yeah. and consultants in Islamabad, right. and you decided, let's stop by and see what's going on. Yes, I have to admit, I thought it was sort of an odd suggestion because yes. we just got there. But I have learned to go with the flow, to just follow your lead. So we went and we walked around and there was this big awards event going on yes. in this big hall and they, they were congratulating various winners. And I, I said to you, <laughs> Do you think I might, my name might be called as a winner? Yes, and they call you. <laughs> and, well, they didn't call me, but I decided I should be prepared for a, an acceptance speech. So <laughs> I stand there in this hall and I'm just going, thank you, thank you, shukriya, shukriya, thank you. I'm sure everyone around me was thinking, who is this idiot? But I had fun. <laughs> you enjoyed that. I enjoyed right? it. So we spent, uh, Three days in Islamabad. If you were asked to summarize those days in Islamabad yeah. you spent, yeah. Yeah. how will you summarize that? What is the difference between Islamabad and Lahore? And maybe you compare your uh, country with Islamabad. Okay, well, it seemed from my very limited perspective for just a few days that Islamabad was a little less chaotic, a little, a little more modern. Yes. Um, of course, it's the it's the capital of the country, so you can expect it to be a little bit um, more organized and tidy and things like that. Um, we went to a, uh, uh, we went to the National Mosque, the Faisal yes. Mosque, and we went to the, the National uh, Pakistan Monument, and it was beautiful and interesting. But the, what I'm going to take away is how many times people could see that I was different, I sounded different, I looked different, yes. I probably gesticulated right. different. And they came up to me. Yes. And they were always curious the and warm like and friendly. Right. They wanted to shake my hand. Yes. They asked where I'm from. Not once did anyone say, you're from America. Oh, bad. Nobody ever said that. Yes. Um, and I, again and again, in Lahore and Islamabad, that's the impression that will stick with me more than anything, is how nice and friendly and inviting and welcoming everybody was. So last night in Islamabad, yeah. Uh, I think we had dinner at in, at uh, Monal. How was your uh, thoughts on? Uh... It was lovely and terrifying. Really, <laughs> the dinner was lovely. 
Uh-huh. With a view of the city lights below, you, you couldn't ask for a nicer place to have dinner with the company of my dear friends. Getting there was terrifying. It was a switchback of roads in this. darkness, not well lit, and blind hairpin turns. The driver didn't want to take us there because he said, my car will not make it up the hill. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it did. But it was, it was, um, it, here's an English expression. It was a nail biting drive. Yes. That's, that means scary. Really difficult, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So give you an, uh, another a new experience which decided to travel via bus, via local bus. Yes. And um, um, from Lahore to Islamabad, we travel in a private car, right? Yes. And uh, how you feel about local traveling? Um, well, this was a, a, a quite luxurious, luxurious uh, coach bus. I've been on many like it before in other countries. And it was lovely. It was spacious. There was... Uh, I was wondering if this might be a bus p- filled with, you know, th- you know, 113 people and 75 chickens. I didn't know what to expect, <laughs> and it wasn't like that at all. It was just, it was just fine. And uh, they stopped at a rest stop uh, after a certain point. And at one point, the the bus the bus driver slowed down. And I understand from Hamad that he slowed down because he was going not that he was going too fast for the speed limit, but that he had to make sure he didn't arrive at this particular. De- destination point too yeah. early yes. to avoid a fine. That was right. different for me. As I know about you, you have visited lots of countries, right? Yeah. Spain, Jordan, I believe so, just Spain or other countries, right? Many countries. Many countries. And you now visiting Pakistan. Yes. And you are from USA. Yes. Right? So, what's the main difference you feel about people of Pakistan and the country and other countries? Well, I don't, know, any? I don't know that I can compare Pakistan to any given country. That would take forever. How about we start with comparing it to my country? Because okay. that's the one I know the best. And I would say, and again, this isn't about one culture better than another culture. I love my country the way you love your country. Yes, yes. But I, what I saw here is a great respect for family right. and for elder people. Right. I get the clear sense that someone of an older age Yes. Is is honored and respected, yes. and and in my culture, sometimes, by it's no means not. always, but sometimes we we ignore the needs of, of our older family members sometimes because America is such a youth oriented culture. Yes. So, how will you differentiate Pakistan and other countries in a traveler's perspective? Well, I think um, in again, we're basing this on one week's worth of yes. data. That's true. But what I found is. Everybody here tried to make my journey as easy and as yes. pleasant yes. as possible. Everything from guiding me th- through a hotel when I didn't know where I was to um, helping me avoid embarrassment when I walked down a hallway with, without any shoes on and the, the hotel s- staff employee generously offered to get me some sandals to help me avoid yes. embarrassment. Right, right. Um, little things everywhere. People are just really really warm and inviting and i was kind of expecting to be viewed with a little bit of suspicion and distrust i never experienced that once yes. not once um there are other countries i've had that kind of experience from but one of the things that i found interesting in pakistan is um men, many of the people speak a little english and that surprised All right. me All right. i thought um nobody knows nobody knows english right. and i know like three or four sentences in Urdu, and all it took was me saying, Asalaam Alaikum, right. or, or, or Bohet Shukriya, just right. a couple words, and they lit up. So can, can you describe how many words you have learned? <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> <laughs> I can count to 10. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to mess up, but Ek, Do, Teen, Char, um, Five. Punch. Yes. Six. She. Seven. S- uh, uh, said. S- at. Great. Uh, no. Das. Wonderful. Can I get most of them? Maybe. You done that. Well, <laughs> very well. And uh, coming back from Islamabad to Lahore. Yes. Uh, we visited an orphan school. How's, how, how's your thoughts on that? One of the greatest experiences of my life. It's, it was going to visit a school where they're teaching these 63 young 
orphan boys from I think I think they said like ages five to fourteen or something like yes, that. I may be yes. off a little. Um, it re resonated with me for several reasons. First of all, I'm the adoptive parent of two orphan baby girls yes. in China, so it, I connected with it personally. But hearing the values that the school's leaders are trying to instill in these children about empathy, about um, reaching for their potential, about um, leadership, yes. um, life lessons that will help them be successful in a way they never could have possibly had. I mean, there's a lot of people doing a lot of good things in the world, but what's happening at that school and other schools like it yeah. is life-changing. And yes, so um, I was not expecting them to <laughs> ask me to talk to a room full of 63 students. Did not see that coming, yes. but it was a joy. Yes. It was an honor. And it'll be one of the things that I will never ever forget. So I'm going to ask you the same question that uh, Little Boy has asked you. What are your best moments of life? My best moments Being in life? Being in Pakistan. Well, my best moments in life start with my adoption of my two daughters. Yes. And my wedding to my wife, that's the first. But my th third greatest happiness in life was the moment I saw you and Hamad at the airport I appreciate early that. on Wednesday morning. And finally, our friendship was complete to see each other in person. Yes. And the fourth moment of joy and happiness happened today, just a few hours ago, yes. at that school for orphan children. That is wonderful. That will, Fantastic. That will be with me forever. So if, uh, if we were to summarize your whole trip, yeah. how will you summarize that? <laughs> I would summarize it by saying there's a lot of misinformation in Western media about the people of Pakistan. And, and yes, the culture is different from the country I live in. The roles of men and women are very clearly defined here. They're a little bit less clearly defined in, in my country. There are differences. And anybody who spends a week in your country or mine, Definitely. you will see the differences. Definitely. But what I saw were how much the two cultures had in common. I think Americans, and there's many, many wonderful, wonderful Americans most Americans are wonderful, but I think there were less. There are lessons that Americans could take away from my experience about how to treat people with kindness, um, a patience. Um, you, you, you get the two of you treated me like I was royalty, and I really appreciate that. It's going to take me some time to figure that out completely. Uh, the first word that comes to my mind is exhausting because <laughs> I am tired, but it's a good tired. Yeah, I wanted to see my friends and i wanted to experience a little of the culture of the of so pakistan. i am hoping you, i did not overwhelm you no and and, okay. and this <laughs> this th that makes me realize okay i'm with you and your dear friend and now my dear friend hamad yes. for a week and i saw your motivation to show me as much as possible right. fill my agenda with <laughs> don't leave any <laughs> empty time right and your partner in crime, Hamad, he had a different motivation. Yes. And it was, I like to call it my protector. Yes. Don't overwhelm Tim. <laughs> don't, don't take him to restaurants that he might hate the food because Tim's not the world's most adventurous eater. Look out for his safety. And it was wonderful that you yeah. wanted me to have a good time and Hamad wanted me to have a safe time. <laughs> yes. It was great. It was well, I just uh, came to my uh, another question that we had played a cricket as well. In, oh, in yes, yes. How's your thoughts on that? <laughs> I thought I knew you. <laughs> <laughs> and I do know you, and I do know Hamad. But the two of you, on that night, late at night, in Islamabad, on a rooftop that had um, yes. a fencing or something around all of it, uh, so that you could play yes. cricket on the rooftop of a building, the two of you had a one versus one competition yes. and it got very intense yes. and both of you got incredibly competitive. It was all fun, it was all good natured, but you both accused each other <laughs> jokingly of cheating and I won, no, I won. And I, I never saw that side of you. And so I remember <laughs> saying to both of you, Hafiz, Hamad, that's the most American I've ever seen either of you behave. <laughs> so uh, you are summarizing your whole trip. Um, I, I, I'm so glad that I was able to do this. Yeah. I will be back. 
um, I will be Pakistan's ambassador when I come yes. back to let all my friends know. Because that's the first thing they're going to do uh, for the next, really means for the next two weeks. All people are going to ask me, tell me about your trip. Tell me about your trip. Tell yes. me about your trip. And I will sing not, say nothing but wonderful praise for everyone I've met. Everyone. It's been, it's been life changing for me. Um, I'm hoping as much as a little bit of Pakistan rubbed off on me, I'm hoping that a little bit of America rubbed off on you. And particularly one way, and that is how we pose for pictures. Yes, that is one, that was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. Every time you post your whole day, yeah. I really enjoy it. I was laughing. Hamad knows that. I was laughing and yeah. laughing. And by that, for those viewers who don't know what I'm talking about, it is my sense, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that in Pakistan, the men who are posing for photos, at least with other men, stand serious, don't really smile, <laughs> hands to the side, maybe hands here. Almost like you were at an, a military academy and it's a tension time, you know, very serious. <laughs> but we don't do that in America. Yes. We hug, we smile, we put our arms around each other. That's yes. how we take pictures. And so toward the end of our trip, and we were getting ready for pictures many times you know i'm standing there with my arms like this the appropriate pakistani yeah. pose and you would say tim let's do an american pose yeah. and you'd put your arms <laughs> around me and a big smile it and is. i thought good a little a little positive of america has rubbed off on you so uh, i just uh, came to mind another uh, uh, the best moment when we were visiting f9 park fatima jinnah park right Oh, yes. And you, uh, we met with a person who uh, who, uh, who has very, uh, you know, same interests just like you. Yes. So how you feel there? Well, for for the viewers, what you're referring to is we're sitting on a bench in yes. Fatima Park, and y you see this man at another bench nearby, and you recognized him, and you said hello to him, and I'm thinking, you know, there's over a million people here, and you know this guy. Anyway, you start talking. And then you tell me that this gentleman is a very well-known um, content creator, yes. humor writer, and, um, and, and podcaster, among other things. And so yes. I asked, could I meet him? Yes. And for me to meet another humor writer, another yes. comedian, an, another person who has some of the – a storyteller yes. like me was amazing. It was wonderful. And we just in, instantly – I mean yes. instantly connected. And of course, we got the obligatory photo with him, and he did put his arms around. Yes, it was in an American, American pose. pose. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an honor, and thank you for being a great host and a even greater friend. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. And uh, if you are watching from somewhere in from across the world, you are more than welcome to visit Pakistan. We would love to host you in Pakistan. Uh, by the way, if you want to check out how we spend these days, you can just visit and uh, you can just watch this montage. Thank you. <laughs>